with regards to working against him and also working against the entire Panther offense. Yeah, we definitely knew that, <clears throat> you know, their offense pretty much ran through him. So, um, you know, coach, you know, we said, you know, it's, it's not a one person job, you know, it's all five of us, all five of us as a team, uh, just to get stops and just make it a tough night for him. Uh, he got it going, you know, in spurts, but, you know, I feel like, you know, as a team wise, uh, every, everybody did their job, you know, I did a good job guarding them, trying to contain them as much as possible. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, you know, we, we came out with the result we needed. One quick question for JB, and then I'll turn it over to everyone else. Um, explain to me in your mind the impact that Federico's had the first two ball games. Oh, man, he's been huge, guys. <laughs> he sinks in the defense so much. You can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. You know, he's an incredible player. I'm proud to have him as a teammate. I tell our guys all the time, let's try to get the ball into bed. because I know for sure it's a bucket nine times out of ten, so. We're grateful to have him. He's a great player. Perfect. Thanks, guys. We'll go to Adam Smith with the Burlington Times News. Do we do we just talk or we raise our hands here? What's the protocol? Just talk. Okay. I, I didn't know if the raise hand function was working or what. Um, Hunter, uh, t tell me about those free throws there with three seconds left, what you were thinking. And obviously, I saw Gerald come through and give you a little hug there right before you shot it um, after he blew the bunny inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I mean, you know, those are kind of kind of the moments you live for. The moments, you know, you should free those by yourself. Oh, down one, you know, got tied up with, you know, those type of situations. So, um, I, I just, you know, wanted to knock down two and, you know, try to try to get a stop to finish the game. But, uh, you know, before the free throw, like you referred to, like all my teammates had confidence in me. You know, they didn't say, Hunter, you good. Go ahead, knock down, step it up, hit the two free throws. So, um, just having good teammates like that, you know, they just give me confidence uh, to, to go step up and hit two. Gerald, what'd you tell him when you came by there? You look like you were relieved that you guys still oh, had a yeah, chance. Yeah, I to was win most it. definitely relieved, but it's just something that we talked about in practice. And I was telling him um, that, you know, we're going to look to him a lot. You know, just because he's young, that don't mean nothing. He's a vet on this team. And I keep telling him, it's, your day's going to come when, like, this team is going to lean on you and you may have to carry us. And, like, today he, he stood up and he knocked down the free throws. And I told him, I believe him. I'm go ahead. Were you mad at yourself for missing the, the shot there? Oh, I mean, it looked course, like the play. Of course, but like most importantly is the win. You know, at the end of the day, it's not about personal stats for me. If we got the win, we got the win. Of course, I wish I could have made that, you know. But at the end of the day, my teammate had my back, and that's what it's all about. And that's what Coach Priest does. I always have each other back. So, Hunter, what did you think uh, brought you guys back in the second half? The first half was kind of a struggle. And it didn't seem like you could get anything to go down, really. Um, but you hung in there and you were able to start to get back in it in the second half. What did you think brought you guys back? Yeah, uh, like you said, you know, first half was just kind of rough, you know, holistically as a team, you know, it was hard to find our rhythm, you know, it wasn't really hitting a lot of shots, but um, I think down the stretch, I think it was around the 11 minute, 11 minute mark, we was just like, hey guys, you know, we, we, we got to get stops, you know. I think uh, Chris Wooten hit a big three in the corner and that just kind of, you know, lit, opened the gates for us, you know, the shots started falling and I think we just really took off from there. So, you know, kudos for him, you know, stepping up, hitting a big one, and it just got us on the right track. Was there any one particular moment that that maybe got you going a little more? I think it was – I think you had 16 of your points in the second half. Was there any one shot or any one uh, particular thing that, that might have got you going? Um, I, I don't think I can point to one shot, but I, I think just down the stretch, um, you know, I just put it on myself, like, you know, when we get back in the game, you know, somebody got to hit some shots, somebody's going to have to step up. So um, I just look at myself and just see what I can do and, you know, create plays either for myself or others. But, uh, you know, today I was able to hit a few down the stretch. JB, you know, what Max, you I'm sorry, Adam, go ahead. Sorry about that, Don. Um, Max, get ready over there, baby. Uh, JB, what did you think wasn't working for you guys in the first half? other than the ball just not going in the basket. Were, were there a couple things that, that you guys weren't doing that you needed to be doing that were that we just got not letting you? We just got out tough then in that transition defense, things that we just got to get better at. Um, they was killing us on the boards, and then they wasn't killing us on the boards. It was in transition. It was just getting out, getting easy buckets. And also, just look at how many times they went to the free throw line. That was that was something that it was hard at night for us. You know, we kept, they kept getting every call. You know, it was stressful. I had four, and it was just one of those days. But you know, we dug deep and figured it out. We'll go to Max with Sports Channel Eight. 
All right, for both of you guys, uh, obviously last year, Coach Draghi talked a whole lot about uh, uh, Chef was option 1A, 1B, 1C kind of down the stretch. Can you all kind of compare and contrast? Uh, obviously, this is your first close game of the season. What did uh, those possessions look like down the stretch for you? And, and what did it feel like to, to not have Chef out there? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously last year, you know, Chef was, was a big playmaker for us down the stretch. You know, a lot of big games, you know, he took a lot of big shots. Um, I just coming in this season, you know, Coach knew, um, you know, myself and, and, and JB and other people who, who we consider, you know, leaders on this team that, you know, down the stretch, you know, we kind of have to do it by committee. It's not one guy, it's not, you know, one person show. Like, you know, tonight I hit some shots. I know, you know, some, some other nights is going to be JB's night, you know, so. Um, I just think that, you know, we're just going to have to do it as a whole. You know, it's not it's not one one option on this team. You know, we have a lot of people who can contribute, you know, throughout the whole lineup, but especially down the stretch, we have a lot of people who can produce. Yeah. No, I guess for me, I didn't get a chance to play with Marcus, but I'm um, just saying the leadership and the way that he played, you know, it was encouragement to me. But then again, I also knew this guy is going to get older. Um, Hunter Woods is going to get older. Fed is going to keep getting better. So I knew coming in, that I had something that Chef didn't get the chance to because they were still young. Yes, they were great players, but they didn't, you know, they still had a lot of learning. So coming into this year, coach already told me, like, you know, let's make it a team. And that's that's big with me because I value winning more than anything. So, you know, any night we have guys that's going to hit big shots. That's awesome. Hunter, you. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a follow-up as much as just a second question. Um, uh, but Hunter, you have now hit 10 of Elon's 13 made three-pointers this year. How confident are you that uh, you'll be able to share that, uh, that the scoring load from beyond the arc for, for the remainder of the season? Um, yeah, I think early on, like you said, it might have been 10 or 13. But, I mean, we have a lot of great shooters on the team. It's been only been two games. You know, some people have a shot, like, you know, Chris Wooten and Hunter Woods. We have, we have a lot of great shooters on the team. And it's just, you know, the first two I was hitting. So uh, later on, they'll, they'll definitely be able to hit some shots down the stretch, you know, as a group. But we have a lot of great shooters on this team. Sure. So Alex Reynolds with Elon News Network. Yeah, great game, guys. I got one quick question. So in that, uh, that first half when, you know, things weren't quite falling their way, uh, you still got some good minutes out of those young guys. Um, and Hunter, especially you, you were kind of in that position last year. So what have you guys seen out of them so far this season and off season? Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, the freshmen that came in, Michael Graham, Darius Burford, uh, and Jaden, I think they played great. You know, I think they've, they've came in. Um, I think, you know, it's hard to compare our freshmen to their freshmen, um, just kind of how the times was. Like, we had a whole summer. We had a, a you know, full preseason uninterrupted. And these are just unprecedented times, like, you know, by, by this time now, we might have had five, six months of practice on our belt, and they haven't had that. So I think um, the, the production we get from them, you know, is fantastic for how much, you know, they've been able to prepare. But, uh, yeah, they'll definitely be big for us. You know, I think each game for them is they're, they're learning at an exponential rate. So um, they'll, they'll definitely, you know, be able to produce more, and, and they, they, did, they did their job today. All right, that's going to be it for the student athletes. And just can I ask a couple more? I have one more. Can I ask? Go ahead, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Don. Um, Hunter, by the way, excellent use of holistic and exponential. It's uh, <laughs> you're really mid-season form here. Um, very impressive. Uh, Fed, like you know, he seems like he's had a good start to the season, and you know, I know sometimes it's you never know what you're going to get down there out of him. But uh, Hunter, what have you seen out of Fed and um, what kind of improvements do you think he's made? He obviously had a good tournament to end the season last year. Um, but how much do you think he's improved his game? Oh, I, I think Fez has been, been fantastic, you know, this whole year. Um, you know, we've seen it, you know, we've seen the, the, you know, the work he's putting in, you know, just another, another year under his belt. And like you, you know, mentioned, you know, he was very dominant in the, in the tournament that we had, you know, in March. So I think, you know, in his mind, I gave him a lot of confidence. And then I feel like, you know, us as players and the staff, like, you know, we know what he's capable of. So, you know, if he got his man on his back, coach says throw it in, you know, let, it, let him do his thing. So, you know, we know what he's capable of. We know, um, you know, we have a great big man down there. So we definitely want to feed him as much as possible. Thanks, right, for, thanks for letting me get that off, Don. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that'll be it for the student athletes. We'll dismiss them. And uh, thanks, guys. We'll Coach Thank thanks, you. guys. Good stuff. Good stuff.
Max. I couldn't hear Gerald. Could you hear? I'm going to need you to trans. Can you transcribe, Gerald? We will await head coach Mike Swaggy. Our thanks to Hunter McIntosh and Gerald Butler for joining us. We'll be quick with Coach Swaggy here because we want to send everybody on their way to enjoy their Saturday night, their Thanksgiving holiday. All right. We'll have an opening statement from Coach and then we'll open it to questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, a competitive game. Much like last year, we played there. I mean, I think it was a great game. And, you know, we're, they were fortunate, I thought, to win last year. We were very fortunate to win today. And I think it's a series we should keep going. Um, has a lot of interest in the area. Obviously, two long time perceived rivals. And, and, you know, it's an honor, first of all, to coach against Tubby Smith. Um, and, and, and a great school, great program as well. But just proud of our guys. We got to learn how to win again. You know, last year's group kind of learned how to win finally. And uh, we got to learn how to win this year. And I think the growing pains that we're going to go through to, to end with the W and 7L is, is a really big thing. Um, we put them at the free throw line early and often. And it's a, it's, a, it's a different time, you know. For them to play, Davidson was a great first game for them. And they had a chance to obviously beat them. Um, we were appreciative of our opportunity on Wednesday, but it's it's not the same. You know, it's not the same a, a challenge leading into this game too. But you know, we, we have not been with referees until Wednesday night, and it shows. Um, we cannot put a team at the free throw line like we did the other night, and certainly tonight. I thought that gave them life and confidence early. And when we got down eleven in the second half, it was just really proud of our guys' resolve. And we talked about turning it, and they did. And we kind of rolled with that group as a result of it, but. Proud of our guys. I think we'll shoot the ball better. We got to keep the other teams off the free throw line better. But uh, glad we won and um, glad they can feel good about it. We'll start with Taylor Drum. Coach, you mentioned the end of the ball game, the end of the second half. Let me kind of flash back and roll the end of the second half and the end of the first half. You were down 11 to, at one point and got it cut to three. What pleased you the most about the end of the first half and how important was that moving forward? Just a response to that four minute timeout in the first. We had a bad end of half against Wesleyan the other night. So we, we always talk about living and learning, making progress. And we say, hey, this, this time let's, let's chip into it um, and let's have a halftime where it could be really positive. Like, all right, we're going to build on that. <laughs> and obviously, we dug ourselves a hole again. But, you know, we have great guys with great hearts and we got to get better. We're going to have a lot of video to watch from this on top of them taking finals this week. We're going to have, uh, so, some class time with them, too, to get better, especially on the defensive end of the floor. I thought we had some slippage here and there, but our guys show great resolve, and I'll never doubt them with that. Um, you watched us last year with the guys who were part of our program, too, and Team 107. Uh, no matter what we got down, we were, we were clawing back. We are fighting back, and, and we showed that again today. So that needs to be the makeup of our team. You know, we're not going to be perfect. We're, another team's going to go on an 8 or 10-0 run. We're going to go on our 8 or 10-0 runs. It's about never getting too high, never getting too low, and just stay with it, you know, win the next possession. 16 miscues through the first two ball games in total, including seven this afternoon. What does that tell you about where this offense is? It tells you progress because practice has been ugly. Uh, we, we have not had many positive assisted turnover day, days. And Coach Holmes, and we, we really challenged him here as we got closer to game time. Like, guys, we got it. We got to correct this to give, a, give ourselves a chance. There's no stat in the offensive end that translates to wins versus losses more than taking care of the ball, in my opinion. Certainly, you got to shoot a certain percentage and all that kind of stuff, but you got to give yourself a chance to get a shot. And uh, those numbers, we say 10 is the magic number. 10 turnovers or less is the magic number to give yourself a chance on that end of the floor every single night, every single game. And, and these first two games, we've done that. We got to continue with that mentality. When you, when you play a lot of guys like we are right now, they, they can add up, you know, fouls can add up. You know, when you start playing, you know, they're not. They're not taking it quite as personally sometimes because you have a lot of guys out there on the floor. So I'm proud of the fact that we're playing more guys and, and our turnovers are still staying down. Hunter Mack hit that first three late. Phoenix would hit four out of their last five from deep by my count. You've often talked about the confidence of shooting the basketball. Boy, Coach, how much did it help the confidence to see that first one drop late? Yeah, Hunter McIntosh, man, believe in him. Uh, He's built for those moments. He is. Um, that's where that's where losing Chef. And Chef was a special scorer. And we'll have to go to a few different guys. Obviously, went to 
Hunter McIntosh late, went to Gerald, you know, Butler late. Um, but Hunter McIntosh, every time he's got space and raises up, he, he's built for those moments. A few times he had those opportunities last year, and I was able, you know, we were able to give, give him an option instead of Chef. He, he took advantage of it too. Now, Chris Wooten hit a huge three in this game. Yep. Um, we were struggling to shoot, and we kept saying, hey, keep taking the right shots, making the right plays. And we're a better shooter team, better shooting team from three than we've shown these first two. And I think overall, most of them have been really good shots that we'll live with. But Chris Wooten kind of opened up the basket for us when we went on that run, which is really appreciated. Perfect. Coach, thank you. Yep, thanks, TD. Good, Adam Smith. Hey, Coach. That is head coach Mike Schrocki with us in post game. As always, coaches comment. TD's not muted. Um, <laughs> I take you didn't like the fouls, coach. No, I'm joking. Um, it, the, the, what did you What did you think when Hunter went to the line with three seconds left there? And you alluded to it. Just I know the confidence that you have in him. Um, you know those those shots obviously ended up being the game winners. I felt great about him going in. Um, would love to have him at the line in every one of those situations to the point where like sometimes you got, you know, if, if there's a certain individual at the line, you're thinking two scenarios, you know, uh, I one's a little bit different, you know, full court, two point game or three point game. Don't get me wrong, but to the, to the point where we felt good about what it was going to be the lead and what we, what we need to do defensively. And so we are ready no matter what, and obviously they called a timeout in the process too. We kind of wanted to zone up and keep the ball in front and had them use that clock. But uh, my confidence level in him, uh, couldn't be stronger, um, especially in those moments and, and at the free throw line. The resolve, I don't know if that's the right word, just to to weather the bad shooting, you know, uh, it wasn't going in for you in the first half. And just, I don't know if that's the right word, resolve. What, what did you see out of your team to get it turned around and not, not loot, you know, not let those guys get too separated, high point, I mean, not let them get away from you, but just to hang in there and eventually be able to come back and win this thing. Yeah, probably resilience the word. I thought we showed resiliency last year and that, that our program and our team has to be that. And, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, we, we've coached them not to get too high, not get, not get too low. Um, our staff's going to have moments. Don't get me wrong on the sideline, but I think you see that from us for the most part and just keep grinding next possession, next round, every four minutes is a round is what we call it. Um, just, you know, you're, you're not going to be perfect. We don't expect you to be perfect. Make the next right play when you're not. Uh, keep making the right play. So no matter what we get down, they're going to hear a lot of the same messaging. And it was an important time to turn it when we got down 11. You know, they had a lot of momentum at that point. So I think they felt the sense of urgency from us and within themselves. Um, we, we got a year now as a program and as a team, and we have enough mix of veteran guys and newer guys where, you know, control those huddles becomes a Hunter McIntosh and Chuck Hanna and some of these other guys, which is really appreciated. Um, you know, Chuck's always a willing talker, but probably, that probably didn't happen as much last year. And this year now with a foundation built, I love the fact that the, the players can really lead this program and take ownership of every situation. At what point, not to not, to not talk about the game tonight, but at what point did you arrive at the conclusion you wanted to start Fed? Um, and, you know, I don't de-emphasize is not the right word, but, you know, by putting him in there, Chuck's getting less minutes, Simon's getting less minutes. Yeah. Like, what? how did you uh, think about that, and how did you arrive at what you've arrived at so far? Because it looks like Fed's playing well. Adam, I know you're getting old, but March 8th wasn't that long ago. All right, do you remember how well Fed played at the end of the season last year? So I'm very aware. I think yeah. we talked about it the other night on the phone. Yeah. So, it was March 9th, too, by the way, not to correct you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like it. I like it. There you go. Uh, Fed has, you know, he's grown. He's gotten really consistent day in and day out. His defense has improved. Um, it was tough decisions. I mean, I, I've got 11 guys right now that really I'm really comfortable playing. And they just have to buy in to, you know, take advantage of the opportunities they do get, you know, trust us as a staff, trust the ultimate goal. And all we want to do is win and get better from it. And luckily, Simon and Chuck, those are our two captains. And they're captains because of their makeup, and they're all about winning. They're all about the right stuff. So I knew, you know, even though they may not start the game, that's not going to deter them from our, our ultimate goals. And, you know, Fed just gives us a different look. He's a big body. He can score on the low block. He's gotten better defensively now. And 
we're going to need all, all those 11 guys. Michael Graham gave great minutes in the first half, and I planned on trying to get him in the second half, but then the game gets, you know, sometimes some of our younger guys have to be patient this year. You know, if we're in, if we're in a dog fight like this, like it's just in, sometimes your instinct is harder. You kind of roll with the guys that you know even better. I know them all, don't get me wrong, but you just kind of do. Um, there's but you're trying to win the game. I understand. You're trying to win the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not that, not that Darius Burford or Jaden Michael, and who's just coming back. So, I mean, it's step by step with him or Michael Graham camp, but, you know, you go kind of what you know and you trust. And, uh, you know, freshmen have to earn that trust. And they are with us. They really are. So, we got 11 guys that we really believe in. And they're all, it's going to be a different, different guys, different nights. And uh, I, I love our group. Max? Hey, Coach, uh, your, your opening statement was a thing of beauty. You answered uh, pretty much any of the questions that I would have had. But uh, I will ask, when those final two possessions, the uh, JB got the, drew the foul, and then he ended up getting the, the open layup. That didn't work out probably as planned. But um, who is – is it Coach Holmes that kind of is the orchestrator of those plays down the stretch? Or, or as head coach, do you kind of – mastermind of those things when it's coming down the stretch and, and how does that look different this year compared to last year max it's a team sport my man so <laughs> uh and if if it was holmes i'd be saying it was Holmes. so holmes calls a majority of our offense i have so, such trust in him it's the system i came from at butler and then ohio state and i really appreciate it, as long as you had the staff to do it um holmes does an amazing amazing job with it but late game i've never believed in a head coach shouldn't have that clipboard himself you know I, I just think you know at the end of the day I need to be going to you guys and say hey I was the one uh that messed up that play you know or didn't call the right play so you know those ones at the end I diagrammed of course but um over the course of the game Jonathan Holmes makes incredible calls um is my guy and uh, he does the majority of it but late game and side outs and baseline outs kind of kind of more my my thing but but a majority of the game is definitely him Alex. Just like Alan Payne is for defense. Alan Payne makes a lot of those decisions for us on the defensive end and does an incredible job too. Uh, Thanks, Coach. That's a great game, Coach. And, you know, there in the second half, it really looked like a lot of different things were coming together. So when you're able to have, you know, Fred and JB uh, get busy down low and then the three-pointers come in behind them, how much confidence does that give you guys as a coaching staff? Yeah, and we're confident our guys offensively. They're going to keep hearing from us. Um, I need. I, I want to get more confident in defensively. <laughs> so that's what's going to create separation. Even the other night against Wesleyan, we were not able to put that game completely away. A 15, 18 point lead is nothing in college basketball, no matter who you're playing. But we were not as good defensively in the second half as the first half. That creates separation. It's like tonight, like for us not to have a lead or have to dig ourselves out of a hole. Too much defensive slippage for us. But offensively, leaving our guys, um, we've got a lot of guys with better reference points as players now and more confidence as players. So we have some freshmen, but compared to last year, um, we have a lot of guys who gain valuable experience and, and believe in them. And Gerald Butler, who has a transfer, is an older guy and certainly has played during his college career. Ike, you know, the same thing. So um, believe in all those guys. And, and when their time comes and it's their opportunity to take the shot or, or drive the ball and make the right play, trust them all. Got time for one more question, Adam. I, I thank you, Don. You know, good. I wanted some more. I really did want some more. Um, All right. Well, uh, so we're good. No, that's we're good. good. One's good. One's good. All we right, can so make it. We can make it work. Coach, and then uh, Mike, we'll do you have on YouTube for uh, transcription? I still got to key it in myself, but uh, Mike, do you have someone? Is do you have a substitutions coach? I, I don't think I've ever asked you that. Do you have someone that's keeping up with? that's coming over and like, Hey, it's time to get Jaden in the game or something like that. Like, do you have someone that's like in your ear about that? It, I lean on our staff a lot during the game. I say, Hey, what do you think? And I'll, and I'll give my, but that, that needs to be me too. It needs to be me. I was part of one program where the assistants kind of done it and did it, did it. Um, right. And I don't think that's between us healthy. Um, again, like the guys got to know ultimately I'm responsible for playing time. Uh, they've, you know, the, the media, whoever else is watching our games got to know, Hey, that falls on me too. You know, it falls on me too. I, I don't, I don't think it's healthy for somebody else on that bench to be pointing and directing guys in and out, but, uh, I've, I have a plan. 
the plan, these two games have gone out pretty quickly. Simon got two <laughs> fouls quick. I got two fouls quick. So that's sometimes so I'm, I'm relying on those guys even more like, oh, crap. This changed. Uh, what do you guys think between this guy and that guy? And it's tough this year. It's tougher. Um, you've heard me say before, I don't think I get stressed a whole lot. Um, I'm thankful for all the experience I've had. And, uh, but, but, you know, with 11 guys and, and figuring out and believing them, believing in them and figuring out how to distribute minutes and who best earns them, it's, it's tough. It's tough. That's why we just need those guys buying into us winning and making steps as a program and team. Do you keep that plan on your person? Do you have like a note card or anything? Yeah. Like a coach in football or anything? Yeah. Right here. There you go. You look like Bob Sutton. That's what he does. Yeah. Those pockets are full of paper. And I write it. I write it every game. I'm sure at this point I could uh, get it printed somewhere, you know, change, change some of the rotations and stuff. I write down all of our calls and late, hit, late, late game stuff. And I just, when I write stuff down, I remember even better, so. Big believer in that. I, I'm it's happy like, to share my car with you as long as you don't share it with Mercer or, or, or. I'm right here on the concourse if you want to come up and see me. I don't know if I, I don't know if the new Elon protocols allow me to. So <laughs> that's nice Elon stationary, by the way. And on that note, we're going to wrap up the Elon versus High Point press conference. Thanks, everybody. We'll uh, get you the box scores, final books in this press conference. Uh, the link soon. Appreciate you guys. Miss you all in person. Yep. I'm here, coach. Thank you. Right. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Nice win.